introduce myself. I'm Prasad Pura from the state of Arizona. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about Arizona Enterprise Services platform that we built um, and, and rolled out. Oh, there you go. Uh, you know, the initiative started a few years ago, but you know, before I start talking about the platform itself, uh, let me talk about myself and what I've been doing for the past few years. So I joined the state of Arizona about uh, three years ago. And before that, most of my experience is in the private sector. I, uh, most of my 20 years of service is in uh, you know, major corporations like uh, uh, American Express, National Football League, and, and uh, Toyota. So, uh, you know, if, if you look at uh, that kind of experience, there's a major corporation, you know, Toyota, NFL, American Express. And then when I joined, I wasn't sure what I'm getting into really at uh, State of Arizona. But I tell you what, exciting times at State of Arizona. I'm going to talk about it. And then I'm pretty sure you'll be convinced about the same in the next few slides. Um, you know, before we start talking about uh, the actual platform and all, uh, I wanted to tell you a, a kind of a fun story of what happened uh, a few years ago. So when I was working at uh, NFL, uh, the, my neighbor walked in and he said, uh, this is just before some Super Bowl event, he said, Prasad, uh, who's going to win the Super Bowl? I'm like, oh, well, I, I think it's going to be, I forgot which team that was, but, you know, uh, uh, I think Jets is likely going to win. They have very good defense, very good offense, you know, awesome teams. He says, Prasad, who's going to win? What? How would I know? How would I know? So, you know, it's kind of, you know, in that context, he was really serious. He was probably going to Vegas or something. He wanted to know because I work for NFL. He thought I know who's going to win. Anyways, I was wondering, you know, it's, it's in the similar context, I was wondering. Imagine I work for a department of uh, lottery or something. Now it's up to your imagination, right? Neighbor walks in, tell me. <laughs> What's the winning number next, right? Anyways, I, I thought that's kind of interesting, you know. Uh, because I'm in the software industry, I know I had this opportunity to work in various industries. It's kind of uh, fun to work uh, at, uh, at a place where you wanted to work. You know, State of Arizona, when I joined, I wasn't really sure, you know. But as I joined, I, 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 I realized it's, it's no short, shorter than any private sector uh, work. You know, it's an awesome place to work at uh, State of Arizona. I'll explain again in the next few slides. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, the platform um, we built and then roll out and adoption. I'm not going to talk mostly about uh, technology. You know, technology is technology, but you know, the kind of challenges we ran into, how we made it possible, and then how we are still um, getting to where we wanted to get to. Uh, let's see if this works. So if you had this question in your mind, you know, private passive government, is, is it, you know, why is it, you know, government really? Uh, if you had that question, hold on to that thought, you know, I'll answer that in the next few slides. The, the, the first thing, you know, I, I really want to talk about the leadership, right? For any of the things you want to do, you know, if you want to do greatest things in your organization, if you don't have the the buy-in from your uh, leadership, right? You, you know that the, the challenge of executing anything is, is going to be a nightmare. You know, Governor Ducey, he came from private sector again. You know, he was a, a CEO for a major corporation before he joined the government. He's a governor now uh, for the past years. You can see, you know, the, the kind of risk he takes in, in embracing technology. You know, if you think about it, um, you know, for example, California, they, they were not sure, you know, with the kind of risk uh, with autonomous cars, but Governor Dushi, right, he, is, he took the risk. It's, it's not easy, right? Uh, and uh, he, he, he signed an executive order in 2015. Um, you know, when I, uh, I'm going to give another example. Uh, in December 2015, I came up with an idea of uh, uh, using Facebook at work. Any, any of you using Facebook at all at work? 
<laughs> See, you know, imagine 2015, back in 2015, right? You know, I, I, I saw an issue with uh, uh, collaboration across agencies, all these silos, right? You have 160 plus agencies, they run on their own, they have their own CIO, IT, budgets, everything. Even though governor is the C, kind of CEO, if you bring parallels to private sector, uh, you know, they have their own vision and, and, and their way of doing things. Uh, they, don't, they don't really think as, uh, as a, uh, one. I mean, they, they are reporting to, uh, at the end, they are reporting to the governor, but they're pretty uh, uh, federated. Now, uh, you know, I, I ran a uh, project uh, that, that affected multiple agencies. And uh, to be able to communicate to the other uh, agencies, it was a nightmare. You know, if you want to run a project that's across the agencies, there was no collaboration platform. You know, to keep it short, uh, and I went to my boss. I had five minute pitch. Uh, okay, here is the problem. I wanted to use Facebook. You know, Facebook rolled out a, a pilot program at the time called Facebook at Work. It's kind of a private instance for state. If, you know, for example, our instance, az.facebook.com. Even though we leverage Facebook, all the features of Facebook, it's private. It's private to the state employees only. So you can do you know, project collaboration and communication and all kinds of Facebook features, but it's, it's truly for work. It's not connected to the Facebook account. Uh, so he said, Prasad, uh, I see the problem you're trying to solve. Go for it. If we fail, we'll fail fast. You know, that's the kind of attitude uh, I, I, you know, I was fortunate enough to work with uh, the leadership all, all up above. So my boss at the time was the state CIO. Anyways, I, I, uh, I really wanted to bring this up because you know, the, the alignment of the leadership is so important and uh, you know, a lot of exciting uh, things happening at the state with the, with the, the great leadership out there. You know, let, let's take a look at the numbers, what we're talking about. You know, we have 30,000 plus employees, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of uh, business units. You talk about business unit, we have it. You know, typically in a private sector, you, you have a line of business, right? You're manufacturing, you do manufacture a few things, you're selling services, you do one thing, but here we, we do 100 plus, uh, 170 plus business units. They do different functions all over. And then IT itself is uh, about, you know, 1,400 plus. And then we have data centers all over. You know, talking about uh, a data center under your desk to a huge data center. Um, it, you know, that's a challenge we're going to talk about more. And then uh, we have about, we start slowly getting into uh, cloud. We have about 500 instances just for our department. I don't have a full number for the rest of the state, but uh, that's one of the things. Uh, 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 going to grow uh, going forward. So that's kind of uh, the landscape. It's not small by any means. Um, so I work for Asset, uh, Arizona Strategic Enterprise Technology Office. If you, if you compare this with a private sector, it's like an enterprise architecture of a big corporation. We're responsible for setting up a, a, a enterprise-wide or statewide IT strategy, uh, enterprise capabilities like email, then finance accounting system, and so on, security, policies and procedures, and, uh, and most imp importantly, uh, we have an oversight of high-risk projects. You know, anything over $25,000, it need to be approved by uh, my boss. And, and anything over a million dollars, again, need to be approved by my boss, but it's a, it's a committee around it. So a lot of oversight for us. So with that, you know, what we saw, you know, I would say opportunity. Uh, you know, we, we saw all these things. I, talk, uh, I mentioned here about how do we not do all these things, you know? How do we not start the projects from the scratch? Like I said, we have oversight of all these projects. Every agency is doing it, their own thing. How do we not start projects from scratch? Most of the time, they, you know, just 
everything. You know, you have to set up your development environment, QRM, staging environment, prod, and so on, right? How do we not do the same thing over and over? You know, we have seen a number of times. It's, it's, uh, it's not easy to convince uh, agencies that you're, you're doing the same thing over and over. But, you know, first thing, we need to have a solution um, so that we can convince them uh, to not reinvent the same wheel. And then uh, data sharing, you know, uh, this is very interesting because we have seen agencies sending data uh, using disks, you know, pen drives, to all kinds of data sharing agreements between agencies. Um, you know, there are a number of reasons uh, for doing that. It's, it's, we can talk more, but you know, they are existing. We saw those issues. And, and then the solutions, redundant solutions throughout the enterprise, right? You know, you know they, these guys do the same thing, these guys do the same thing. And then same thing with the licensing, you know, the licensing cost. You pay the licensing for Microsoft here, 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 here. You know, security, security is a, is a major issue, right? Now, it's, 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 it's actually getting worse day by day with all the connect, connected things, right? So, like I said, you know, we saw all these opportunities, you know, walking in from private sector to public sector, you know, the one positive uh, aspect to it is you see all these, oh, I can improve the organization by, do it, by not doing all these things, right? So our main objective really is, you know, is really the, around the cost. You know, how do we do things most effectively, you know, and, and then reduce the cost for the citizens? You know, at the end of the day, we are accountable for uh, citizens of the state of Arizona. And also, how do you sustain it? It's not about today. How do you make it happen for the long run? How do you enforce standards? You know, uh, everyone doing their own thing, but how do you enforce standards? And, and, and as you guys all uh, might know, we, have, we are the owners of petabytes of data across the state, you know, any state, any government agency, we collect a lot of data, right? And how do you share it? How do you, how do you make money out of it? You know, it, you know, the more data you have, right, you should be able to make more money, but uh, the valuable data I'm talking about, you know, for example, Department of uh, uh, Transportation, right? You have all kinds of uh, information about your driver license. Right now, they, they, you know, if you're a business entity, if you want to integrate with uh, your system about uh, driver license verification, whatever, uh, you know, it's pretty ad hoc. You know, there is no uh, a standard way of uh, doing business with that department. There are in some cases, but in, generally speaking, if an agency X wants to do business with agency Y, there is no uh, a standard way of establishing that uh, uh, data sharing. Now, it's not just that. You know, most of the times you want to start a, a business case, you want to do, you want to solve some problem for some um, business unit X. The data discovery itself, you know, how do you? I don't even know what I can, uh, what other agency can provide for me to solve that problem. So the data discovery is, 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 is an issue. Um, you know, uh, the security guys always come into this picture, right? How do you uh, reduce the risk? You know, that's one of the objectives. The, we have a risk department for the entire state. How do you reduce the risk by not exposing all these things in ad hoc ways, right? And then from the developer perspective, how do, we, how do you, how do you uh, reduce the development uh, cycle? You know? um, so these are kind of the objectives. Uh, in uh, building this uh, AESP platform. You know, we're, we're not trying to replace uh, uh, all kinds of applications. You know, there are cases where you don't want to use uh, this platform for, um, you know, custom applications. You know, a lot of custom applications across the state. Uh, we're not trying to replace, you know, if, it, if there is an SAP, uh, you know, or you know, Salesforce, we're not trying to replace those uh, uh, CARTS applications. What we're talking about, the scope of uh, this uh, platform is to onboard the custom applications across the agencies. And APIs and data sharing, like I touched earlier, you know, how do we, how do we expose, a, a, how do we get the agencies exposed their data through APIs? 
so that others can consume in a, in a, a private manner. It's not public, but uh, within the state. Um, you know, that, that for us is, is going to be a huge win. That's like our number one priority uh, in, uh, in, in developing this platform. And also collaboration, it increases a lot of collaboration. Now uh, others can discover and, and then uh, sh share the data. And the application development, rapid application development, really, you know, most of the projects, it's, it's, again, uh, you start with the dev, dev environment QA stage prod. By the time you get to what you wanted to do, right, you know, you need to work with uh, your infrastructure team, bring up the environment and so on, right? How do we reduce that cycle of development? You know, uh, that's one of the, the goals of this platform. And economies of scale, uh, you know, this is interesting. Because m all, most of the agencies, you know, un unlike, uh, you know, if you're talking about NFL.com or, 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 or any public websites, they have huge traffic, right? Most of the uh, applications that uh, the government, uh, the state government I'm talking about, they're very critical, they are line of business, but uh, they're not heavy. You know, that's where the economies of scale comes into picture. They they don't consume all the cycles. You know, they have certain bursts of uh, time where they actually uh, have a need of scaling up. But generally speaking, economies of scale really works very well with all these hundreds of applications where they're not super busy most of the time, but they have the entire stack of environments up and running 24 hours. So this is a perfect case for economies of scale. And, and private to the state, it, it's, you know, if you have all the security controls, why would you need really private? But, you know, it, it's a hard battle. It's a step forward in the right direction. It's private to the state. It's not on the public uh, path. So a private path, public cloud, the combination, you know, it's, uh, right now the entire platform is on Amazon. Um, you know, there were questions around why is it not um, on your existing data centers? You have all the hardware, right? We don't want to be in the data center business. That's, uh, you know, my boss Jason is going to talk about uh, his vision uh, on reducing our uh, data center footprint and moving everything onto cloud tomorrow. But uh, we don't want to be in that business. That's why we didn't uh, try to put OpenStack on our data centers. Um, architecture today, you know, currently we have, everything is on Amazon. Uh, you know, it's kind of tiny um, to read through. But on the right side, if you, I'm going to just quickly go at the high level. I'm not going to go too detail into the architecture, but uh, the left side, all the cartridges, and the right side is the, the pass core components. It's pretty heavy stuff on the, in the right and left. You know, the, the base environment itself, about 25 instances. And if you are familiar with uh, Amazon, most of them are M3 mediums. Uh, you know, all of them are uh, driven through uh, the puppet scripts. And they're pretty standard stuff. It's a multi-AG deployment, you know, highly available, and auto-scale and all that. You know, auto-scaling is controlled through PaaS core. But we are moving towards this new architecture where we're going to leverage most of the Amazon's auto-scaling uh, features. So if you see, uh, if, if you go back a little bit, you know, uh, you know the right-hand side here is pretty heavy on pass core and stuff, right? You know, that's going to go away. You can see the footprint itself has reduced quite a bit. Instead of 25, now we have like 19 uh, nodes. Uh, you know, the public subnet on the top and private subnets uh, for databases and rest of the stuff, and then uh, we're going to use read replicas for, at this point, we're thinking read replicas for, uh, um, you know, um, 
not for high availability, but it's for uh, uh, disaster recovery. But you know, th this is still fluid. It's, it it needs to be uh, solidified a little more. But the, the key takeaway from this is we are uh, going uh, more towards, uh, Amazon, from the infrastructure perspective, we're, we're going to rely more on uh, Amazon for auto scaling and all. From the WSO2 side, of course, they, they have all these components. We have the app server, uh, ESB, uh, application server, identity server, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, you know, this is really the, the key. I, have, I got only six more minutes here. So the, the, the challenges, one of the key challenges, and I think you can bring some parallels into your, uh, your organization as well. You know, the, the government is very federated. All these agencies, they run independently. You cannot force them to join this platform. You see an issue, you can only suggest. Okay, it's probably the better solution here. So the challenge here is, you know, how do you, how do you make them opt-in? How do you make them uh, join the platform that we built? And then and the, most of these businesses, uh, the lines of businesses, they, they are 24-7, 365 days. They cannot go down. You know, how do you support this program, right? And it's going to cost quite a bit, you know, for, with, the, with the staff of, I have, you know, about seven folks in my staff, uh, you know, supporting this. You know, it's, it's almost impossible to do 24-7, right? You know, basically they ask for SLA, you know, whenever someone wants to join this platform, what's, what's your SLA on this? Can you support me 24-7? And the, the, the last one, I'm, I'm talking about only top three uh, challenges here, really. Um, it's, it's, it's about uh, cost recovery, you know. I, for this platform, I cannot lose money on it. I cannot profit from it. I can, you know, it's, 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 it has to be absolute. When I charge a customer, uh, an agency who is on the platform, the accounting guys don't like the fact that if I overcharge or even undercharge, it has to be absolute. In a multi-tenant environment, how is that even, you know, it's, it's pretty hard. They want to know to the bare bones. Now they know a little bit of technology, they're gonna ask, oh, how many CPU cycles, you know? How do you know this API did not consume the entire, um, you know, and how, do you, how, do you, how, how can you give an absolute number to the CPU footprint, to memory footprint, all the I.O., everything? Now, uh, the strategies that work, what we did that, uh, in the rollout is first thing is eat your own dog food. You know, one thing we realized, okay, why are we looking outward? You know, how do we look at inward first? You know, our department of administration itself has hundreds of applications. How about we put all our applications in there first? You know, we have a bunch of APIs and, and, and applications that are on board now, but the, the strategy here is the, we have to first, you know, because of this opt-in model, uh, you have to find ways to uh, convince your customers, you know, there are a lot of uh, efficiencies even inside our department that we can uh, uh, utilize this platform with. You know? So we have all, all, all these uh, APIs, and about 50 applications are in pipeline right now. You know, if you think about it, you know, all these applications, are, they're, not, they're not small. And, and by next year, our platform is going to get really busy. You know, what we're doing, we're not doing a, a lift and shift. We're also refactoring a lot of these applications as we move in. Um, you know, this is my favorite. You know, if you, you know, sometimes if you go to a restaurant, uh, you know, they give you a booklet to uh, select from. Really, you know, that's what you know. This is kind of the anti-pattern that uh, wanted to put it out on, on the on the screen. If you have hundreds of items to pick from, you know, first thing is the cost of maintaining that, uh, that restaurant, right? You know, if you think about it, you know, you need to keep up with all the material you need and then how many chefs you need and all that. So, you know, this is uh, something we, initially we put everything that WSO2 has, um, supported, like BRM, you know, 
BPM, and so on. Now we came down to very core, um, uh, you know, the, the API manager, ESP. There are only five now right now that we have it on the platform. Basically reduce the scope uh, to uh, what is most uh, sought after, not everything that's available uh, on, the, on the platform from WSO2. Uh, you know, the, the another one we, uh, we realized is about because of this large menu, we are also uh, spending 30 to 40 percent of the time on maintaining it, and almost every week by week, uh, this is the real number: 30 to 40 percent on uh, applying patches and, and upgrading and, and so on. Every time the, the team is busy with, uh, you know, just the platform support, then where is the time for actually migrating the applications? So. Basically, our cloud, WSO2, is, is completely uh, managing it. And the cost recovery model, this is still an issue. Like I said, uh, you know, if anyone has any ideas, um, all ears, uh, I want to stop by and ask you. But like I said, how do I um, price the services that I, I, I provide uh, to uh, the most accurate number? Um, you know, this is still work in progress for me. Um, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be very happy if you, have, if you run into the same situation. Um, happy to talk to you. Um, I'm running out of time. With that, uh, thank you, and uh, have a, a great rest of the day.